arrested is a terrifying and frightening thing with all the horror stories about police abuses of power and well other prisoners being absolutely dead set on making your life miserable in a variety of horrifying ways at least that's what the movies have taught us as so often happens the reality of being arrested doesn't generally reflect what's depicted on the big screen so well what about that one phone call rule so it turns out the you get exactly one phone call when arrested thing is a simple useful plot element and is easier to explain to an audience than the other alternative of being arrested is a legal minefield where your rights can vary based on a variety of factors in reality the number of phone calls you can make varies from as many as you want to zero depending on the severity and location of your crime as well as how you act when arrested thanks to the sixth amendment you are entitled to legal counsel and as clarified in the supreme court ruling brewer and williams you are entitled to that counsel at or after the time that judicial proceedings have been initiated whether by formal charge preliminary hearing indictment information or arraignment as Hollywood depicts you are also perfectly within your rights to keep your mouth shut though they don't actually tend to get it quite correct in the way that it's commonly portrayed the police only need to give you the Miranda warning if they are conducting a custodial interrogation and want the record of that interrogation to be admissible in court other than that giving you the Miranda warning is not necessary in fact even if they don't give you this warning when they are about to perform a custodial interrogation they can still use what they learn in their investigation it's just that what you specifically said in this case isn't admissible in a criminal trial but if they use this information to find other evidence that evidence certainly is admissible so bottom line contrary to what Hollywood shows don't expect them to give you the Miranda warning while they are cuffing you and certainly don't think that you now have a get out of jail free card because they didn't as you might expect any lawyer worth anything will tell you to exercise the right to shut up no matter if you are 100 without a shadow of a doubt perfectly innocent and plan on being completely honest about it there is literally no benefit to you talking to the police in the situation where you find yourself being arrested or brought in for questioning about something you allegedly did for more on this subject there's actually a phenomenal lecture by a professor called James Duane as well as a officer George Brutch of the Virginia Beach Police Department officer Brutch even goes into some clever interrogation methods that are used by the police to get people to talk needless to say in these interrogations they are extreme experts experts at extracting information that might incriminate you and you are in a high stress situation as well so you will lose every time and if you're innocent you might even make it seem like you're guilty unintentionally due to the stress of the situation and look the police they're not looking to get an innocent person convicted but they don't know you and if you're in that situation they very likely don't think you're innocent to begin with they will be looking for even the smallest hint of evidence that they will be using to further their case against you now the fact that you're entitled to speak to a lawyer would suggest that you're allowed to use the phone but that's not actually the case you don't necessarily need to use the phone yourself to get a lawyer further the dramatic scenes depicted in cinema where you use your one phone call to contact someone and they don't pick up and so you don't get another call well that's also complete bunk while there is some variation in laws from state to state in general the police can at their discretion allow you to make any number of phone calls to friends or family members or really anyone that you want to or to get your affairs in order as with using the phone at all these phone calls are usually a privilege offered by the police a privilege that can be revoked at any time should you become violent or antagonistic but if you behave yourself and are using your calls constructively in general you're not going to have any trouble getting access to a phone as mentioned the laws vary from state to state for example in the state of Nevada any person arrested has the right to make a reasonable number of completed telephone calls from the police station or other place at which the person is booked immediately after the person is booked and except where physically impossible no later than three hours after the arrest Rest. so in this case unless the phone lines are down or you become so violent that they end up having to tease you to unconsciousness or similar scenarios you will get a reasonable number of phone calls regardless of how much of a jerk you might 
B. One would imagine that the better you behave, though, the higher that reasonable number is going to be. However, this isn't always the case in other states where sometimes your only phone related right is potentially the ability to contact a lawyer. But again, even if this is not a right, generally you need to call your boss at work to say you're not going to make it in, or maybe contact your husband to tell him where you're at, or maybe you need to arrange for someone to pick up your kids from school, etc., etc., etc. The reality here is that most police officers are going to be happy to accommodate you as long as you're not causing any problems. And anecdotally, in researching this topic, we actually found an example of an officer who was willing to drive people who were arrested to an ATM so that they could get the money to post bonds. You see, his department did not take credit or debit cards. So when it's that or waiting around for the person to make the necessary phone calls to gather together the cash and have someone bring it in, at that particular police department, they just take you to an ATM if you've got the necessary cash in your bank account. It's quicker and easier for them and for you. Without them doing this, there are scenarios where you might spend the whole weekend in the county jail waiting for the judge to see you when otherwise you could have just made a bond and been out right away. So now the question comes to, well, what if you're causing problems but you still need to get a lawyer or notify someone to pick up your kids or something like that? In this situation, the police might not be inclined or required to give you that phone call. Well, in these cases, the police will typically take care of it for you depending on what specifically you need taken care of. Even if you do play nice, they also might not allow you to use the phone if they believe you may communicate with someone outside to dispose of evidence or something like that. For this reason, in some departments, they may simply have a policy of always being the go-between no matter what. This, of course, leaves massive room for interpretation on both sides of the law, and since the police are only human beings, mistakes can and will be made. So, bottom line, once arrested, you have many rights that you're free to exercise, but making a phone call isn't usually one of them. And regardless of what Hollywood has told you, yelling at an officer, WHERE'S MY f PHONE CALL, is not going to get you a phone call in many states. However, on the flip side of that, if you phone someone and they don't pick up, the officer isn't going to gleefully tell you that was your one and only phone call, now you're stuck in prison forever. Indeed, what they're going to let you do is probably redial that number or call someone else so they can, you know, carry on with their job. Now, of course, there are bad eggs in every profession, but most police officers are just normal people looking to do their jobs outlined by the law and aren't going to go out of their way to mess with your life. Beyond any legal or moral issues here, doing that would just typically result in in more paperwork for them to do, and nobody likes paperwork. And now for some bonus facts. While most, including me, are happy to use prison and jail interchangeably, prison and jail are technically not the same thing. In the United States, jail is run by the county sheriff's officers, while prison is run by the prisons and corrections office of each state. In Canada, jail is run by the provincial government, while prison is run by the federal government. And now for another bonus fact. You might also be wondering about your phone rights after being convicted. The rules here vary from state to state, but in general, there are a lot of times where prisoners all have access to a phone, but it costs a lot. In fact, the fees charged by prison phone providers were so ridiculous that the FCC recently stepped in. Before this, when making calls, the cost could be as high as $17 for a 15-minute phone call. Now, though, even for collect calls, it's only about $3.15 for a 15-minute conversation. It's still quite expensive by typical telephone standards, but it's much better than one dollar per minute. As FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler stated, this means that many families will no longer have to choose between talking to their loved ones in prison and paying their utility bills. It means that society will benefit from the decreased rates of recidivism that family contact brings. While the inmates and their families are certainly happy about this, the companies involved are not, and some of them are currently contesting this in court, claiming the new rates are below their cost to maintain the networks to the prisons. So I really hope you found that video interesting. Hopefully you won't need it anytime soon. If you did find it interesting, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos every day of the week. Looking for something else to watch right now? Well, click on a video on the screen. Those are from our archives. And as always, thank you for watching.